get them exercise. Your little, 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 you know. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Time to cowboy up some, and you better go submit some notes. You hear me? Yes, sir. Like I told Zach, you better hit every one of them. You know? I don't hit every one of them. I don't know if they can be in the right spot.
Sunday. <laughs> hey, good morning. Look over at your neighbor and say good morning. And the other neighbor say good morning. We are so happy to have you in the house today. If you're a guest, we want you to know we're honored to have you. There is a hello card on the back of the seat in front of you. Sometime during the service, if you'll take that card, fill it out, drop it in the offering drop box as you exit. We'd really appreciate it. There's also a QR code if you want to do it on your phone. But either way, we'd just like to know you up in the house. Are you glad to be in the house? Yeah. How many are glad to be in the house than the best prison in the whole wide world? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Well, it's a very, very special day. I just wonder... How, Anybody, I got, I got money, I got like $1,200 to give away at the end of the service. If you hadn't signed up, please sign up at our welcome time over here. Uh, we're going to give you a shot to, we're going to pull three names out of a hat to give away $200. I got cash full of money, but I got gift cards here. I just wonder if anybody can tell me, first person to the stage that can run up here and claim this card, the first person to run up here to the stage and tell me who played in the Super Bowl last year. Super Bowl last year. You don't even know? Anybody know who played in the Super Bowl? That's what I'm talking about. Who was it? The Eagles and who else? There you go. Eagles and the Chief. Come on with it. Can anybody tell me the score? It's amazing what a big day it is, but how soon we forget. Crazy. Good, good word in that. Hey, can anybody come to the stage and tell me what the score was to last year's Super Bowl? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. You know it, Lewis? Come on, man. 38, come on, Lewis. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, brother. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking. Hey, what about last question? These are $100 gift cards, by the way. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're just $10 They're Chick-fil-A gift cards. I mean, you can't go wrong. God's cards. Hey, last question. Here it is. All right. MVP, MVP of last year's Super Bowl, right here. Uh, Connor, get somebody else. Who was it, bro? Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Come on, give it up for him, man. That's what I'm talking about. Well, let's see who's going to win today. How many of you guys say that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win? Let me see your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. How many of you guys say the Dallas Cowboys are going to win? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Some of y'all have a clue. How many of y'all say the Eagles are going to win today? Raise your hand. That's what I'm talking about. What about the 49ers? How many say that? That's what I'm talking about. Good job, guys. How many, how many people in the, in the house would say, man, I'm not watching one second of the game? Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, it's a special day in the house, and we got a special guest here and his wife, and we're looking forward to hearing him speak. Always, Super Bowl Sunday is incredible here at Hope because we eat a bowl of soup. And we want to invite you to eat a bowl of soup with us. We've got chili, homemade chili, homemade potato soup, and some sandwiches, and some uh, ice cream. And it's all free. But we eat soup on Super Bowl Sunday to remind us there is people that don't have a bowl of soup to eat on Super Bowl Sunday. And all these years, we've either been serving the homeless or we've been taking up money to feed the homeless today we're taking up money to feed them tonight when you kick off and we kick off the game hope baptist church will be feeding providing food for 300 homeless guys in memphis union mission that's right pizza cheese dip ice cream so during the welcome time if you'd like to contribute like i don't just stand up here alone like dude let me encourage you to do it man i want to participate i want to put some money in there because i want to be able to feel like i did something too so Right here at the, uh, during the welcome time, you can, there's a box over here, a donation box. So if you'd like to contribute, we'd love for you to do that. And we appreciate you wearing your team jerseys today. It's going to be a great day. And like I said, we're giving away cash. At this time, we believe in the power of prayer. We want to take a minute, pause in the service and pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. So many people need our prayers. Today, maybe you have a special need in your heart. Would you just raise your hand saying, hey, remember me today. Remember me. Brother Roger, would you lift us up and pray for us today? Think I got it? Got it. Hey, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts today. I ask your Father just to remember those who, uh, who's not here today and uh, that's homebound and those who could make it today. 
I ask your father to uh, bless Brother Burr and, and uh, Billy and the band, the singers. I ask you uh, to bless our special yes, speaker God. today. Yes, Lord. I ask your father just uh, watch over this church. And, Thank you, and, Jesus. Uh, and, uh, and those who don't know you today, Father, I ask you to bring the Holy Spirit into this and do not let him leave. We're not promised tomorrow. Ash Father, to thank you for those who uh, that keeps this church going, keeps your house going. Uh, those who uh, that we don't see in church, they're they're taking care of our babies, they're teaching our children, and especially Father, those are, those are uh, keeping us secured. Those who are out there in the parking lot watching over us, uh, watching, keeping us safe. That's out in the weather and the elements. I ask you, Father, to uh, bless them. And Father, uh, speaking of security, I ask you, Father, to uh, uh, protect us from the evil one. We ask this yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. hey, take a minute and welcome those around you. Go ahead, give them a hug, a handshake, fist bump, man, whatever you want to do. It's good to see you today. strong 
talking, I've witnessed it. You're constant, I've witnessed it. And I'm confident that I'll see it again in the psalmist says in Psalm 30 that weeping may endure for the night but joy comes with the morning you know every one of us are going to face some sort of trial, some circumstance is going to come up in our life but today I want you to be encouraged that joy comes with the morning I don't know when your morning is going to be I don't know how long this season's going to be, but I trust that our Savior is going to give us joy. So we just got to cling to it. We got to trust Him. Yeah. 
Seasons will come. Seasons will go. But you promise to never leave us, God. You'll never forsake us. And we can trust in every circumstance. God, today help us to rest in that truth. God, today I pray that you open our hearts, God, to receive what you have for us today. Work in our hearts. Change us from how we were when we walked through these doors. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Amen. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together and give it up, Billy and the band and the singers? What a phenomenal job today. <clears throat> I want to take just a moment to introduce our speaker to you, Jared Farlow, and his wife Christy is right here on the front row. Go ahead and give it up for Christy. Uh, almost uh, coming up on one year anniversary, one year anniversary, uh, March the 25th, so they've been married almost a year. And Jared is uh, 
has played at Ole Miss under three different coaches. He played under Hugh Freeze, Matt Luke, and then also Lane Kiffin. And then he's been on staff there. He's a chaplain down at Ole Miss. And so we're honored today to have Jarrett Farlow with us today. Would you put your hands together and big welcome there. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. I'm definitely grateful to be here. Thank you, Pastor Burr, for this opportunity. Um, it's been really great. Everyone here has made me and my wife feel welcome, so we appreciate you all. I feel special. Even Pastor Burr let me use his personal bathroom in his office, so I feel special. You know, you can tell a lot about a person by how clean their bathroom is, and so y'all got a good pastor, I'll tell you. So um, I definitely appreciate you all and, and happy to be here. Um, so I just want to share with you all this morning um, some of my testimony, uh, just some things God has done in my life, some trials I've been through as an athlete, um, and just uh, just want to leave you all with some, some uh, encouragement to carry, and hopefully, prayerfully, um, just things that I've been through in my life can somehow impact you this morning and, and what you're going through. So for me, I'm going to kind of start back when I was young, growing up, so I'm originally from Noonan, Georgia. Uh, that's where I grew up, that's where all my family is. Um, I grew up in a, a Christian household. Um, I have an older brother, two younger sisters. And uh, my dad was act actually my youth pastor growing up. And so I'd go to church every Wednesday night, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. Um, and I remember when I was 12 years old, uh, it was one Wednesday night, my dad was preaching on heaven and hell. And he was saying how, you know, those who believe in Jesus as the son of God and place their faith and surrender their life to him um, and the eternity that we have with him with that. And he also talked about, um, those who reject Jesus and decide to go their own way and do their own thing, what would be for them in eternity as well? And for me, or he, he actually left us with a question, and he said, um, or he asked us, how sure are you that you would go to heaven if you died tonight? And for me, that, that kind of rocked me to my core because I wasn't sure. And so I remember I didn't really say anything that night, but when I went home, I just kept thinking about it. And then when I woke up that morning, um, I, I was still thinking about it. And I just knew I needed to get right with God. I needed to surrender my life to Jesus. And so I remember praying to God. My dad had already gone to work, and I still had to go to school and, and all this. And so I was like, God, please don't let me die before I get to talk to my dad. Please don't let me, uh, please don't come back. Don't send your son back until I get to talk to my dad tonight. And so I went to school, and then I actually had football practice. My dad was my coach. And so on the way home from football practice, I talked to my dad and asked him about how I can surrender my life to Christ, and he told me how, and we, we prayed together, and, and so that started my faith journey, and, and just going through high school, um, just growing in my faith, um, and also, I was really blessed to be gifted athletically, so God opened up some doors for me there, I played football, basketball, baseball, golf, I was on the fishing team, I just love sports, um, but for me, I love football the most, because my older brother, he's a really good football player, and so I wanted to be like him, so I wanted to play football. And um, God opened up a door for me to, to play football at Ole Miss. And so I was really, really excited about that. Um, but about a month before, and up to this point in my life, I never really went through much adversity. I never really was tested much in my faith. But up to this point, um, I was about a month out from when I had to come to Ole Miss to start our off-season training. And I was really excited. I was trying to get myself prepared. So I was doing some training on the side myself. And um, I actually injured my knee, and so I went to the doctor, and they told me that I had torn my ACL and would have to have surgery. And for those of you who know that kind of surgery, um, it kind of takes a long time to come back. It's about 9 to 12 months. And so I was really devastated. You know, I was like, God, you opened up this door, and now it seems like you're closing it. And I was just really kind of scared and upset, didn't really know what to do. And so for me, I thought, man, I can't tell the coaches. I can't tell them that I had torn my ACL because they're not going to bring me on the team. And so I decided I wasn't going to tell them. So I just, I came on like nothing happened. Um, I tried to go through all the workouts, everything that they asked of me with my ACL torn. And in doing that, I really kind of messed up my knee a lot more. A lot of times it would shift and, and pop out and it would swell up really bad. But eventually we made it to spring practice. And I remember one practice, I went up for a ball. I played receiver. I went up for a ball and came down and my knee just completely buckled on me. And so I went to the doctor there, got an MRI, and they told me how, you know, you tore your ACL, you tore your meniscus in three different places, you partially tore your MCL, 
and you also uh, chipped some of your cartilage off your knee, and that was probably the worst, he said, because later in life, I'm going to have arthritis. So anyways, um, I got the surgery, started going through all the rehab. It's a long, grueling process. Went through 10 months of working out and training, and finally got released, and this was my sophomore year. And I was really excited. I was ready to get back out there and compete. And about seven practices into that next spring, um, I was doing a, running a route, and my knee kind of just shifted, felt a little weird, and went to the doctor after, and they checked it out. <clears throat> and come to find out, um, I had torn my ACL again, or torn my graft. And, man, it just really, really took the wind out of my sails. I just spent 10 months of my life training really, really hard, putting a lot of time and effort into getting back. And then, you know, I just, just felt like I was back at square one. And so I really prayed about it. I was like, God, I know you have a purpose in this, and so I'm going to trust you. So I, I gave it another go. I got more surgery, did more rehab, um, and finally at 10 months got released from my junior year. And I was blessed to, to stay pretty healthy that year. I still had some injuries I dealt with. I had a separated AC joint, and then also I had like a hair fracture in my spine, which sounds worse than it was. I, I did have to go through some rehab, but... But um, that was my junior year. So then my senior year came around, and I was really pumped because my knees, my legs started to get stronger. I started feeling better. Um, and then it was my senior year, so I was excited. And this was around March of 2020, and that's when COVID hit. So they sent everyone home, all the players home. And for me, though, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go home. I'm going to use this time to really prepare myself to get ready for whenever they do bring us back, I'm going to be ready. So I went home. Trained really hard, worked out every day, and got myself right for when we did come back, I was ready. And it showed. I did really good. I was making a lot of plays, worked my way up the depth chart. Actually, at the time, one of our, one of our coaches, uh, Coach Derek Nix, um, he's not at Ole Miss anymore, but he was, a, he was an amazing coach. But he was a receiver coach there, and he called me and told me, man, you're looking really well. Your practice film's looking good. Um, keep it up, and there's going to be some light at the end of the tunnel. And I just remember hanging up the phone and, and just started crying and, and thanking God. I was like, man, I've been through all these injuries, and now things are looking up. God's working it all out, and um, there's going to be some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, about two weeks after that call, we were going through fall camp, and, um, you know, I was running a route, or I forgot what I was doing. I was doing a drill, went to cut, and I just felt a pop in my knee. And I hit the ground, and I just... I just couldn't believe what had happened. I knew the feeling, I knew the pain, and I knew that I had just torn my ACL again for the third time, and I went to the doctor and found out that I had torn my ACL again and would have to have surgery, and this was my senior year and the third time I did it, so I knew that my career was over, you know, and it was just, for me, that was the first time in my life or in my walk with Christ that I started to really be mad at God and question God why he would allow that to happen to me. Because for me, you know, I tried to live my life right on the field and off the field. I tried to do everything the right way. I tried to use my platform for, for God's glory. I even started up a, a Bible study with the receivers. And so I felt like I was doing everything the right way. And so I had no idea. I couldn't comprehend why God would allow me to get injured again. And that was a really tough place for me to be in. I think, though, a lot of us can get to that point in life where we think things are going right. We're trying to do everything the right way. And then the, a door gets closed on us or something doesn't happen or something does happen to us. And we start to question, God, why? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? And that's where I was. And that's a very tough place to be in. And, um, but for me, it wasn't until I, I stopped asking God why, you know, why did you allow this to happen to me? I started asking him what, what you're trying to teach me through this. And so when I started doing this, God began to open my eyes to the bigger picture of what he was doing. I couldn't see it at the time, but for me, I got an opportunity to step on with FCA, working with local high schools, and then um, later down the road, God opened up a door for me to step in to be the team chaplain now. And I know that's a, a door only God could open up. I'm only 25 years old, and God's using me in ways that, that he shouldn't be because it's nothing that I do. It's just God using me, and so I know God allowed me to go through certain things to prepare me for what he had in the future. And um, I couldn't see it at the time, though. I didn't understand, but now I can see. And so I want to share just a few scriptures with y'all that really helped me in the time of, 
of adversity, and there's just really been some scriptures that I rely on heavily going through life and facing different trials, because here's one thing I do know is that I'm not unique. I know that everyone in this room has different adversities you've been through. Some of y'all right now are going through some really tough things, and you might be questioning why. Why, God, are you allowing this to happen to me? Why are you allowing this to happen to a loved one of mine? And so I hope and pray that these scriptures that we talk through in a second can just shed some light and give you some peace about what you're going through. So the first scripture is James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 and verse 12. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Verse 12 says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. These are some really, really good scriptures here and something that I, I come back to often. But one thing I want to point out first is that first line there, whenever you face trials of many kinds, you know, James is telling us that it's not if we go through trials, but whenever. Um, and it's very important to know that because you want to prepare yourself and go ahead and let yourself know, I'm going to go through some tough things. A lot of times we try to steer away. We try to stay comfort in our comfort zone. We try to avoid hard things. But no matter how hard you try, you're going to go through some tough things. So it's being prepared and being ready and understanding that things are going to come. And he also says, consider it pure joy when you face those trials. For me, when I first read that, it's kind of like, how is that possible? How can I be joyful or how can I be happy when hard things happen or come to me? I've never been happy when I've gone through a tough trial. But I believe that joy and happiness are two different things. They're not the same. So joy is more of an inner peace. That even though outside, around me, things can be going crazy, my world could be crumbling around, but on the inside, there's this peace that I have that, you know, God's in control. He's going to work this out, and I trust him that he's going to make a way out of this. And so it's having that inner joy, that inner peace, even though your trials, the, the uh, things you're going through may be tough, but trusting that it's going to work out for your good. And so I want to tell you all a few points, share a few points with you on how you can have joy or why you could have joy in trials. The first one is trials build our ability to persevere. Trials build and develop our ability to persevere. Perseverance is huge, especially in a world that we live in full of trials, full of ups and downs, full of highs and lows. You've got to be able to persevere. Perseverance is a continued effort to do something or achieve something despite the difficulties or despite how long it takes. So it's incredibly important that we are able to persevere. And even James says, trials produce perseverance. And perseverance leads to maturity, completeness, and purity. If y'all are like me, you need to be mature, complete, and pure. And so those trials allow us to build up that perseverance so that we can overcome the trials in life. And the next thing is trials build and reveal character. Trials build and reveal our character. You can tell a lot about someone by how they face or respond to adversity in their life. Um, and, you know, it's easy to trust God when everything's going great. When, you're, when uh, life's going well, your family's doing good, you're healthy, you got a good job, you're making good money, it's easy to trust God in those times. But do you trust God? When things are not going well, when things are not going your way, that's when your character is revealed and able to be built. And so this is what James is telling us. He's encouraging us not to complain about the trials or the struggles that we face. I'm the same way. I'm a complainer. My wife can probably tell you that. I don't like to go through hard things. I, I don't like to. But we have to see these trials in our lives as opportunities to mature. Because ultimately, that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be mature and complete. If he shelters us from every storm, then we miss out on that opportunity to develop and to grow into the men and women that he's called us to be. So we can't run from the adversities. Um, and one thing, too, that's important to know is that God, he may not remove the storm altogether, 
but he will provide a way through the storm, and he promises to be with you in the storm. And so it's, under, it's good to understand that you're not alone, and God will get you through it. Um, the trials, last thing, last point on this one is the trials will ultimately make us like God. Ultimately make us like God is where we get the term Christ-likeness. And so I love this kind of illustration of a silversmith, um, how they test and purify silver. So what they do is they, they heat up silver to a certain point to where all the impurities begin to rise to the top. And the silversmith will clean it off and he'll heat it back up. And he'll continue this process over and over until the silver has been tested and made pure of any impurities. And the silversmith knows that it's pure by looking over the silver and he can see his own reflection in it. In the same way, God uses the trials in our lives to purify us and to make us more like him until one day he can look down at us and see his own reflection in us. And so he uses the trials to make us more like him. And that's God's ultimate goal for us. We see in Genesis chapter 1 how God created us in his image to be like him in his image. But the sin, the impurities in our life have marred that image. And so God, through Christ, is restoring that image back into us. And it's not an easy process. It takes time. It's painful. But ultimately, it's to make us more like him, to be able to overcome the trials in our lives until one day we get to be with him forever. And so that's why we can count it joy to go through the trials in our lives because it's building us to make us mature, complete, not lacking anything. The second verse I want to share, and this was a really big one for me, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 3 through 5, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. So one thing I want to point out, and this is very important, Nothing that you've been through is wasted. There's nothing you've been through that's wasted. God can use some of the most messed up and twisted situations for good. And it's hard to understand that sometimes, but it's very important that we, we do know that. So you never know the people that are around you that are going through certain things that you've already been through. And God wants to use you in their life to provide comfort, and to provide peace, knowing that, hey, if you can get through it, so can I. So God may comfort you and get you through a trial so that you can get someone else through a trial. And I've seen this play out in my own life. You know, now that I get to work with athletes on a daily basis, I've had many athletes come to me and they have injuries they're going through. They're going through some tough things back home, whatever it is, and they start to lose faith. And they start to, to un not understand what's going on or they question why God is allowing certain things to happen to them. And, man, I'm able to step right in and speak from my personal experience of things that I've been through, how God has brought me through things, and allow them to see the bigger picture of what God is doing in their life. And the same for you. You never know who God wants to touch through your story. The power of your testimony, no matter how big or small you think it is, God can use that, and he wants to use it. It's a really good resource, and it's, it's not fun to get that, but once you have it, it's very important, and God wants to use that for something good. And so ultimately, God desires for us to be mature, complete, and not lacking anything, and overcoming the trials in our life gets us to that point. And one thing that I hang my hat on that really brings a lot of peace in my life is knowing that ultimately this world is not our home. You know, for the believer, those who surrender life to Christ and live their life for him, man, there's something far better coming for us. And I've heard it put this way, for the unbeliever, this world is the closest thing um, to heaven they'll ever experience. This is the best it's going to be for them. But for the believer, those who trust Jesus and, and follow him with their life, this world is the closest to hell they'll ever, ever experience. This is the worst it's going to get for us. So we have something far greater that we can look forward to and know that, man, it's going to be worth it. And I love Revelations chapter 21, 1 through 8. If you all follow along with me, it says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth, first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. 
I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. There will be, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Right here. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who is sitting on the throne said, I am looking or I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be co-signed to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Man, from it has provides so much comfort for those who believe, but it also provides a warning for those who don't believe. But man... That verse, verse 4, he will wipe away every tear. There will be no more mourning, no more crying, no more death. And that is good news for us who believe that this world is not the best it's going to be. There's something far greater ahead for those who are able to persevere and stay with the Lord. And I love Jeremy Camp. He's a Christian artist. He has a song called, There Will Be a Day. And it says, I can't wait until that day. Well, the very one I've lived for always will wipe away all the sorrows that I've faced to touch the scars that rescued me from a life of shame and misery. This is why I sing. There will be a day with no more fears. There will be a, a day with no more fears, no more pain. There will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more. We'll see Jesus face to face, but until that day, we'll hold on to you always. I want to leave you all with this verse. From Romans 8, 18, it's from Paul. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And I'm telling you all, if you all just keep holding on, keep believing, keep trusting in God, even if you can't see it right now, I promise you, he's going to come through for you. And it might not look the same way that you designed it up, but it's going to be way better than anything that you could have designed up. And ultimately, we got somewhere, a, a place that we're seeking that's not here yet, but it is to come. And if you stay on track, you keep believing, you keep trusting God, it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to ask Pastor Burr to come up and lead us in a time of prayer and response. Um, and just really ask you all to think about these things and these scriptures that we talked about. Really appreciate you all for allowing me to come and share with you all this morning. Well, we, uh, we never close in a uh, service by giving you an opportunity to respond to the message of Jesus Christ. Jerry, we want to say thank you so much for sharing your story, for his glory, man. Thank you for sharing your heart with us today. I just want to ask you today, you know, last night I was watching TV just for a moment, and I saw James Brown, the commentator, and he was on an award show, and he came out and he, he was kind of endorsing, um, I guess, a a certain ministry that was uh, for mental health but the first thing out of his mouth he said right here he said I want to be clear I'm a commentator and that's my job but I'm here to bring honor and glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he said they may have picked the wrong person to be on this show or to endorse this but I want you to know my relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing when I hear athletes like Jared and other guys that's played in college and in the NFL, it seems to always come down to a few things. They always come down to a couple of things to say, you know, the most important thing in life is not all the money, all the things. I talked about Pete Maravich the other day. All the money, all the accolades, all the things. When it comes down to it, real peace is only found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you don't know Jesus today and you want real peace, I want to give you an opportunity to invite him into your life. So today, if you would close your eyes and 
bow your head for a moment. I give you the opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Just like Jared did riding in that car with his dad. Just like I did as a six-year-old boy. There's no way to get to heaven apart from Jesus Christ. We're all sinners. Every one of us. No matter how good you think you are, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all deserve hell. But God made a way through his son Jesus. He died a death that we deserve to die. And God's not looking for per perfection. He's looking for progression. He wants you to come to him in your life and surrender your heart and your life to him. He made it so simple that a small child could be saved by his Jesus Christ shed his blood by giving his son so that we could have life. It's not enough to know that we're sinners, not enough to know that, that Jesus died. You got to receive him into your life. Today I give you the opportunity. If you'd like to know you're going to heaven, would you simply pray a prayer just like this? Just say, dear God, I know you love me. And God, I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. But God, today, I accept Jesus Christ into my life. Jesus, thank you for paying for my sins. Come into my life. Just say that. Come into my life, Jesus. Save me. Change me. Make me your own. I give you my life. The Bible teaches that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, have you invited Christ into your life? May I tell you, that's the best decision you'll ever make. This morning, we want to give you an opportunity to respond if you made that decision by an invitation. So I want to ask everybody in the room to stand to your feet at this time. And today, if you prayed and received Christ, we want to invite you to come forward just for prayer. I'd like to pray over you just for a minute. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. This is a private, personal decision between you and Almighty God. Nobody looking around. But today, if you invited Christ into your life, would you, would you be courageous enough to come forward and let me pray for you today? Would you come, just leave your seat, make your way? can relate to Jared's message in some way we all go through hard times challenging times storms the Bible teaches that Billy quoted the scripture in John chapter 16 verse 33 Jesus made made the statement in this world you'll have trouble you'll have storms that's a translated word we're either going into a storm in the middle of a storm or coming out of a storm everybody in the room is that way and as Jared shared today James, Lord Jesus' half-brother, consider it pure joy. Not, not if you storms are going to come, it's when the storms are going to come. Storms are inevitable. They come in all sizes and shapes. And God allows storms to come into our life. They don't just happen. He, he allows them. And none of us like them. Like, I don't like them. Like, Jerry's, I don't like them. But personally, I don't know how people get through life in this world without Jesus Christ to carry them and hold on to and today maybe you're in the middle of a storm I don't know where you're at I don't know where this this message lands in your heart maybe today you just need to reach up and ask Jesus turn back to him and say Jesus I'm going to trust you that you're in control and you know where I am and what's going on God you allowed it come into my life you didn't cause it but you allowed it and your word teaches me that if you're for me who can be against me and the best is yet to come with you Jesus maybe just declare that faith statement today 
Jesus, I trust you. Father, we thank you for this day, this time. We thank you for everybody that's here today. I thank you, God, for Jared, for Christy being here today. We pray blessings on them and their ministry. Thank you for his story, God. Thank you, God, for his testimony. Thank you for the message we've heard today, God, from your word. And, Father, we just want to declare our faith in you. You say, I don't know what's going to happen, God, but I got my eyes on you. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to keep picking my feet up and putting them in front of me. Keep my eyes, keep focused. Long to please you. Not perfection, but progression. Philippians chapter 1 teaches every one of us God is working all things out. Every one of us he who began a good work and you will carry it on to completion. He's working that out for our good and his glory. He's always at work. I don't know what you need to hear today. Be encouraged today. You've got a God that's in your corner and he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Whatever he brings you to, he'll bring you through. Father, I pray blessings over this room, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks again. Won't you give it up for Jared and Christy coming today? Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Hey, you may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to go ahead and draw the names and uh, give away the cash. And so uh, we, if we could get the buddy, if you could bring those over here. And uh, the two buckets, we're going to pick them out. We need someone trustworthy to pick out the names. Everybody runs up to me and go, pick my name, pick my name, pick my name. Come on. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about which one. <laughs> Is Jim Robinson in here? Jim, come on down. He's, he's the chairman of Deacons. We'll let him do it. He, he blame him. <laughs> come on down, Jim. Run down here, Jim. See ya. Let me get the balls when I've got them. <clears throat> Anybody want to win $200? Pick us three names out of both hats, Jim. We need three out of each one. What's that, under 18 or over 18? Under. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you picked that name out. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this story. But <clears throat> there was a young man that ran up to me and said, Pastor Burr, please pick my name. Please pick my name. Please pick my name. And the first name that he pulled out of here was his name. I don't know if he's got a prayer life or what. Asher, come on down here, boy. <clears throat> Brack, come on, Brack. Got your name right here, Brack, right here. Come on, buddy. And then we got Bonnie Rowe. Bonnie, come on, Bonnie. How far are we going to hold them back, man? Let's see. Let's give them a shot right here. Come on with it, man. Come on. Yeah, but right here's a good idea. Come on right here. Come on right here, Asher. Right here, come on, Asher. You get three thro three throws, bro. All right? You get $200 if you hit it, man. You get, let, me, let me count it. Make sure we got it here. Oh, got it. Got it right here. Okay, bro. Hold on. You, am I on your way? You got it? Hey, give me a little chair, a little clap. Come on right here. Come on, man. Take off, bro. Whoa! Man, good job. Asher, so Come on, Asher. You got it. Come on, buddy. Ho! All right, Asher. You got to move on up right here, Asher. Right, right here, bro. No, man, right there, bro. Right there. Come on. Take, it, take your time, bro. Oh, man. Come on, bro. Come on with it, bro. Good job, dude. Let me get that little bit of ball, man. You want, hey, you want this ball, Bonnie? You want, the ball? you want this little bit? Oh, wait, come on up. We're going to get you up. Come on up, girl. Come on up, girl. Come on up right here. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Try it, girl. Oh, good try. Man, come on, girl. You got it. You got it, girl. Come on, you got it. That's how you chip. Oh! That's how I'm talking. Here you go, girl. Woo! Good job. Where'd that come from? 
I dropped it. Ho, 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 ho! Ho, 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 ho. Oh, here you go. Hey, here's a $20 for trying. Hey, give it up for her. Okay, Brack, right here. See what you got, bro. Oh, watch out. Look out back there, man. Hold on. Hold on a minute, bro. Hold on. Move up a little bit right here, bro. You want that ball? This ball. Which one do you want, man? This one, bro. It's a better ball, man. Come on. Oh, here you go, bro. God bless you, man. Good job. And so I'm talking about. All right. We need some. Uh, Jim, you got me some adults right here? Where do you at? There you go. Come on with us. Man, all the adults, man. They're ready. Woo. Jerry, you you gonna throw two here in a minute, man. You got to loosen your arm up, man. All right, give me one more. You got, oh, Jim, you picked your own name for real, man. Picked his own. You think we should give him a shot? Probably no. Uh, uh-uh. no, we ain't doing that. Man, we got four names. They just come up here and get in line. They don't, we didn't even call our name. Just come over and get in line. Come on with it. All right, here we go. Fred, come on up, bro. Fred, see what you got with that jersey on. JJ, come on, JJ. Jim, you get a shot, you draw your own name, but you don't get no money if you hit it, okay? (laughs) Bracey, you here? Come on, girl. Wait a second, Fred. I think we gotta move you back. Go against that wall. I'm just kidding, right here. You go right here. I may run out of money. Come with it. You get three, yeah. Oh, man, so close, bro. Come on, Fred. Oh, good try. Come on, Fred. Oh, bro, I'm calling this. I'm, I'm, I'm calling this shot, bro. He's a grown man. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, JJ. Good job, Fred. Come on, JJ. Oh, come on, JJ. You got one more shot. Good job. Come on, come on, hit it. Ooh. Oh, man, good job. Come on, Bracey. You ever heard this ball? Come on, girl. You want which ball you want? Come on, come on, right Come on, come on right here. Let's, let's get this line right here. There you go, right there. Come on, girl. You got it. Come on. Come on with it. Good job. Give it up for her. Jim, your turn. Come on with it. Come on, Jim. Ooh! Come on, bro, Jim. Give him a little cheer. Give him a little cheer. Oh! That's what he gets for drawing his own name. Come on with it. Ooh! So close. Good job, Jim. Hey, Fred, come back up here. JJ, I'm going to give you all one more shot. Come on right here. Right here, JJ. We're going up right here. But it's only for half. You get a hundred dollars. You hit this right here. Hundred dollars right here. Come on. Come on, bro. Ooh, come on, bro. Get three shots, man. What position do you play in football? Linebacker. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, here you go, friends. Good job, bro. Congratulations. Come on, JJ. We all about giving out some money here. Come on, hundred dollars, man. Come on with it. Come on, bro. Oh, there you go, dude. Thank you. God bless you, man. Good. Jared, come on, man. Billy's been practicing all week, man. <laughs> you go, Jared. Three throws. Do we give him any money or not? Hey, you all you can move up. Move up to that green line. Come on. <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Let me get you a hundred. Let me get you a hundred. <laughs> yeah, he's going. 
Billy, go ahead. We just get one throw. That's what, that's what happens when you practice all week, man. <laughs> Look at his eyes. He, he didn't even sleep last night. He's been practicing all week long, man. Oh! Oh! Hey, man, we got soup. Man, what a great day. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Hey, we're just going to use the chairs that are in here. Instead of trying to get the folding chairs up for our time, if we could get some of the guys to take up like this section here, roll the tables up, move the chairs around. If you're a guest and you're leaving, God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We'd love for you to stay. We've got plenty of soup. If you could just line up down the hall, really appreciate it. Come on, look here, bro. I'm, this is where you go, honey. Heck no, man. I'm giving you. I got to turn this mic off. I'm sorry.